Is it on? Yeah, it's on. Right. Yeah. That's going in. <laughs> <laughs> so in this video, we're going to talk about why there is no one training plan for fat loss. That's it. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Let's go. <laughs> So you often see... What's the best plan? You often see on the internet, What's yeah. the best plan? What's the best plan for this? What's the best plan for fat loss? It's what's like, the best plan to get abs? What's yeah. the best plan to tone up? Oh, mate, what's the best training plan to make big arms? Like, what's the best... You know, it's just so frustrating. It's like... It's like last week, a bloke in Starbucks said, what's the, what's the, the diet that'll get me the results the quickest? <laughs> As opposed to what? The ones medium? Medium quick. Medium. Medium quick. Yeah. Don't, don't want them too quick. I don't want to go too quick. I don't want to get results too quick. What's your third yeah. quickest then? There is no best plan for anything. Like when people look at a training plan, they're like, oh, is this is this plan gonna get me gonna gonna help me lose weight? Well, yeah, if you don't eat too much food. Yeah. Like it's gonna. Of course it is. But tr you shouldn't be training for fat loss. No. Resistance training is not for fat loss. No. It's for retention of muscle tissue. But yet you'll see a lot of people thinking that their gym session is what's going to get them leaner, what, what's going to, to make them lose weight. They'll pay no attention to nutrition, but they start at the gym and they're doing four sessions a week, you know, an hour session. Ridiculous. Like, and that's why not... people, people often say as well, like, oh, I started weight training and I got bigger and bulkier. Mm. It's probably because you thought you could eat more eat food more. and actually you can't. Really? Let's say you're training four times a week, and let's say maximum you're probably expending 300 calories in that hour. Like, because he, like, even myself, who's big, obese, massive, actually obese on BMI, actually not, obese, no, obese, <laughs> obese, <laughs> ridiculous. But anyway, like, so it's not. About, so that'd be 1,200 in a week. That's not enough to lose any appreciable amount of body fat. It's not like all. even if you you ate at maintenance, and if you're not gauging it, how the fuck are you gonna know? 1,200 calories would be a third of a pound lost. Pointless. A third of a pound. You're not gonna accurately track that. You're not gonna be able to measure it, and you're probably gonna get a little bit despondent because your results aren't going the way that you want them to. It will take you a fucking year to lose about stone. Not gonna happen. Complete waste of time. Complete waste of time. So the thing to remember with your training plan is that you cannot directly target fat from a certain place in your body just by training it, for there example. There has been some studies <laughs> before anybody <laughs> fucking pipes up. Yeah, there'll be, yeah. There'll be people who could go on about it, like, yeah, a 0.1% or 1% difference potentially, but for most people, yeah. the everyday person who just wants to lose a little bit of weight, tone up, whatever you want to call it, training your, like, triceps because you want to get rid of your tricep fat isn't going to work. No. Like, it's not going to make a difference. No, same as doing a thousand crunches on a Swiss ball is not going to get you abs, you're still no. fucking fat. Man. Yes, you just need to lose the fat from around the area <coughs> yeah. first. Once you get lean and once you get to that point, you can then start playing around with those things if you really want to be neurotic about it, but it's completely unnecessary for most people. Obviously building an area of muscle which is going to make that area more prominent, so therefore it might look a little bit tighter against the skin, yeah. would be a feasible fucking solution to that. But realistically, like Dan says, you're not gonna do a fucking thousand crunches and get no. a fucking washboard abs. And it's not even noticeable either. Like even like that research that shows that you can slightly spot reduce, it's not noticeable. Like how are you ever gonna notice it? Because you're not gonna be able to put two of yourself next to each other and go one person did it, one person didn't. And to, it's not to, gonna happen. To my, to my knowledge, I think it's one study, there, and it was on twelve untrained females. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And there's obviously. And even then, before. it wasn't even spot reduction, as into the point of like the part of the muscle group. I think it was literally lower and upper. It was lower and upper. Yeah. So even there, you can't really spot reduce tech, like on your abs or. On your arms or whatever so please do not do a training plan because you think it's going to like i've seen them before like the um like ab blasters and stuff like that. it's like doesn't fucking do anything what? Does doesn't it? do anything no put the ab blaster away Fuck's put the ab blaster away do you know what i mean ridiculous anyway last point what should your training plan look like a good training plan a good training program will focus on resistance training and if fat loss is the goal cardio should be used alongside your nutrition to supplement a calorie deficit yep so in terms of resistance training you want to make sure you're hitting each body part at least twice a week yep. is preferable um, and if you're probably looking for optimum progress maybe three times a week for those areas you really want to bring up work on. Decent programs would be things like full body, upper lower, upper lower, push pull legs, upper lower, push pull legs, push pull legs, and then maybe splitting it down into other areas being a little bit more specific. So you might do say, mm -hmm. I don't know, um, chest and glutes or something like that. Yeah, chest, you can, you can you know move I mean? the volume around you a can, bit. You can move and you can play around with it. And it's also, if you've got an area of your body that you just quite like as it is and you want to just maintain, you can do it once a week. So for example, legs. Like 
you should be aiming for about 10 to 20 sets per muscle group over the week. Mm -hmm. So think about what that is. And now don't go for 20 fucking sets Straight away. every yeah, single muscle group, no. Like maybe pitch it around the 10 to 15 mark. So you, you're realistically doing maybe, let's say six sets in session one, six sets in session two. So that will be two exercises, three sets of each. That's pretty much it. Like you don't need to go fucking berserk with all the fucking sets. No point. Anyway. Because you can do too much volume. You can. You can. Diminishing returns, that's called. It's called a bell curve. Ooh. So as hypertrophy, as um, so volume. So what's like this, is it? Yeah. Like, like yours is, yeah. 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 Like a like a little button mushroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So as volume increases, hypertrophy goes up, but then if volume goes a little bit too much that you can't recover, you then actually get diminishing returns. So be careful. Be careful your training plan. That's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit like, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And we will see you in the next video.